Yo, what's happening gang? Welcome to your eighth MongoDB for beginners tutorial. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about a tool called RoboMongo, which gives us a visual representation of our data in MongoDB. All right then gang, so in the last few tutorials, what we've been doing is creating an instance of our Mario character. Then we've got that character and we've saved it to MongoDB, okay? But we're just kind of taking Mongoose's word for it at the minute. We don't have any kind of visual representation of that data in a database or a collection anywhere. We're just kind of assuming that Mongoose has done its job correctly and yet it's out there somewhere being stored in MongoDB. I always like to see the data, so I'm going to show you a tool which I think is really useful called RoboMongo, which allows us to see all of our data in the database. So I'm going to point you in the direction of the RoboMongo website, which is robomongo.org. I'll leave the link down below. And this is a free tool, so you can just hit this download button right here. It's going to give you two options, either an installer or an executable file. I've got the second option, but you can choose whichever one you want. It doesn't really matter. Once you've downloaded it and installed it, just hit up the icon, uh, this little rocket right here. Now, you might not see this new connection thing. If you don't, just click Create then you can rename new connection if you want. I've not done that. Leave this the same and leave this the same. Click save, then you will see this dude right here. So click connect. And then now this is gonna show us our different databases. Ignore this project one, that was just something I created a while ago. This thing right here, this tester room, that looks pretty familiar. And if we look back to our code in the connection.js file, you'll see right here, we're connected to the database using this connection string. And right here, we gave it a database name called Testeru. Now, when we first ran this, Testeru didn't actually exist. So Mongo said, hey, why not? I'll create this. So that's what it did. It created that database for us. And thereafter, it just connected to that database. So this thing right here, this Testeru, is actually just that database. Okay, so we can expand this. And then we can see our collections in here. And remember, we made a Mario character collection, which is right here. This refers to this thing right here where we said mongoose.model Mario car. Now notice what's happened here. We've said Mario car. That is singular. Mongoose kind of assumes we're going to have multiple instances of this model in this collection. So very cleverly, it pluralizes it. Mario cars. Pretty cool. So that's our collection. And okay, there's four things in it, even though we only saved one thing. So what is going on here? Well, first thing you'll notice is that they all have an object ID. This is a unique key specific just to that one record. So these are all different, yeah? So they've all got a unique key. Let's expand one of them and see what it is. So ID, that is the ID again. The name, Mario, okay. Then there's this V thing. I'm not gonna talk about that just yet. Okay, what's the second one? Okay, name, Mario. That's a bit weird. Yep, third one, Mario. And uh, yeah, fourth Mario, what the hell is going on here? There's four Marios, even though I've just saved it once. Well, actually we didn't just save it once. How many times have we gone into this command line tool and ran npm run test? Quite a few. So every time we do that, what is happening is this Mario character right here, we're creating a new version of this character. And we're saving that new version of the character to the database. Doesn't matter that it's got the same name, doesn't matter at all because Mongoose assigns a unique key, a unique ID to each time we create an instance of that model. So every time we create one, it's getting a different unique key. And that's all that matters. It's saving those dudes to the database every time with that unique key, even though the names are the same. Just think about it. If you had a list of users, more than likely you're gonna have a user with the same first name, right? So it doesn't matter that things have the first name the same or any other property the same. What matters is that Mongoose gives this a unique key. And every time we create one of these, it's got its own unique key. And when we save it, it's got its own place in the database, which is why we've run it, must have run it four times. Therefore, we see four records in the database, okay? So then this is RoboMongo. So as we start to save more data or delete data, we're gonna be able to see it now in RoboMongo. So this is not compulsory. This is just recommended. I really like to see my data as I play around with it. And I think it's gonna help you too. So first things first, I wanna clean up this database because if we keep on saving new records, that's gonna cause some problems later on when we come to retrieve records, whose name is Mario, for example, because it's gonna bring back a whole load of them. 
So I'm going to show you a trick we can do to clean up the database in the very next tutorial. I'll see you then.